lecture 13 distributed shared memory preface recap of previous lecture in previous lecture we have discussed the basic fundamentals of distributed deadlock detection and different classes of algorithms such as path pushing edge chasing diffusion computation and global state detection to basically uh, see the distributed deadlock in distributed systems content of this lecture in this lecture we will discuss about the concept of distributed shared memory as well as provide different ways to classify distributed shared memories and consistency models of distributed shared memory and also discuss Lampert's bakery algorithm for shared memory mutual exclusion introduction distributed shared memory is an abstraction provided to the programmer of a distributed system it gives impression of a single monolithic memory as in the traditional von Neumann architecture programmers access the data across the network using only read and write primitives and they would as they would do it in uniprocessor system programmers do not have to deal with send and receive communication primitives and also ensuring the complexity of dealing explicitly with synchronization and consistency in the message passing model so all the intricacies will be bypassed if the programmers are given a high level abstraction which is called a distributed shared memory so distributed shared memory abstractions they communicate they provide the abstraction to the programmers so that they can communicate using read and write operations in the shared virtual space no send and receive primitives to be used by the application under the cover send and receive used by the distributed shared memory manager here locking is too restrictive and also need the concurrent access so with the replica management problem of consistency arises so weaker consistency model that weaker than von Neumann architecture is required in this particular scenario let us understand this particular picture to understand the the place or the placement of a distributed shared memory in the system architecture now we see that in this particular figure we have seen that every process or every processor has its memory within it so out of this particular memory which is available with the processor and the system some part of the memory is basically assigned for the distributed shared memory and remaining will be used as the local memory this particular memory which is now is spared by the different processors will be managed by a module which is called a memory manager and this particular memory manager will give a complete one view of a monolithic memory that is called a shared memory and that is realized using memory manager in the system so that was an architecture so here the placement of the shared virtual memory you can see is lying over here in the distributed shared memory and this memory manager and now basically the the processes of the application they communicate with the memory manager through two different constructs one is called invocation the other is called response so invocation and response are basically the primitive to access the memory as if it is they are in the von Neumann architecture the advantage of distributed shared memory it shields the programmer from doing the send receive primitives that means the programmers have to only use the read and write primitive regarding realization of read and write primitives on the distributed system that is the send and receive will be completely abstracted single there will be a single address space and it simplifies the passing by reference and passing complex data structure 
So once a single address space is available, the programming becomes easier and the constructs like passing by reference and passing complex data structure will become a convenient for the programmer to use the distributed shared memory. It exploits the locality of reference when a block is moved. Distributed shared memory uses simpler software interfaces and cheaper off-the-shelf hardware, hence cheaper than dedicated multiprocessor systems are realized. No memory access bottleneck here as no single bus large virtual memory space is available. Distributed shared memory programs are portable as they use the common distributed shared memory programming interface. The disadvantages of distributed shared memory. Here, programmer need to understand the different consistency models to write the correct programs. Distributed shared memory implementations use asynchronous message passing and hence cannot be more efficient than the message passing implementations. By yielding control to the distributed shared memory manager, software programmers cannot use their own message passing solutions. So it's an abstraction and the programmer has to work in that APIs or app interfaces which is being provided by the distributed shared memory. Issues in implementing distributed shared memory software. So there are several issues in implementation and uh, we will be touching upon in more details in this slides. So some of the issues which are listed over here as semantics for concurrent accesses must be, must be clearly specified. Semantics of replication, location for the replication for optimization and the, it will it should reduce the delays and number of messages to, to implement the constructs. Similarly, the data is replicated or cached. This particular aspect is a decision aspect in the design part. Remote access by the hardware or the software, this also is a design aspect and this will be a major issue. Caching oblique replication whether it is controlled by the hardware or software is also a design issue and this will be dealt uh, for different applications. Distributed shared memory controlled by the memory management software operating system and language compilers. Now this particular chart or a table matrix this will give a comparison of early distributed shared memory systems. Now the type of shared memory systems we have seen in the or we are seeing that uh, in this matrix that there is a single bus multiprocessor and uh, multiprocessors and paste based shared memory, shared memory, shared variable, distributed shared memory, shared object, distributed shared memory. So these are uh, different uh, type of distributed systems and they use a different kind of caching methods. Some are using the hardware and the, some are using the software and remote access also some are doing by the hardware the others are realizing using software so all these comparison will show that that distributed shared memory requires a lot of system level intricacies and depends upon different applications how efficiently they are going to exploit hardware versus software replication versus uh, caching. So these are the major issues which we are going to see and different consistency models so that that distributed memory will be realized as single monolithic memory at the time of access using read and write. How that is all done, we are now going to see the memory consistency model because this model is now given to the programmer and programmer will see this particular model and write a programs. These models, how they are implemented, we will see in this particular discussion. Memory consistency model. Memory coherence. Memory coherence is the ability of the system to execute memory operations correctly. Assume and processes and SI, the memory operation per process PI, 
So also assume that all the operations issued by the process are executed sequentially and pipelining is disallowed. So if we see this particular figure 13, it shows the sequential invocation and responses in a distributed shared memory. So in this particular model, one thing we have to understand is that there is interaction between the process and the local memory manager, the placement we have shown you in the previous slide. Now the process will through the operations, it will do the invocation for the shared memory use and this particular invocation in turn will make a call to the local memory manager. Local memory manager will basically handle these invocations through the internal details of that we are going to see and provide the response to the operation. So rest of the internal intricacies are hidden from the programmer or is being abstracted only in the form of invocation and response. So these particular every invocation will lead to a different memory operations. Now you see that there are so many number of operations simultaneously at the same point of time are issued on the distributed systems. So basically each processor will have its own memory operations. So many memory operations will be overlapping or non-overlapping and so many number of permutations are possible. Which one is basically the correct one or a, and which one is not allowed or not correct. So it depends upon different memory models that we are going to see. And this memory model is basically useful to the programmer to design the correct application or programs. So now we are going to see the memory coherence. Observe that there are total number of so many possible interleavings. So SI is basically the memory operations. So, so many possible permutations are there. So memory coherence model defines which interleavings are permitted. So as you see that not all permutations or not all interleavings are allowed in the system. So some are uh, basically allowed. So the interleavings which are permitted only they will be captured by the model. So memory coherence model will define those interleavings which are permitted. Traditionally, read returns the value which is written by the most recent write. So most recent write is ambiguous with the replica and the concurrent accesses. So distributed shared memory consistency model is a contract between the distributed shared memory system and the application programmer. So different consistency models are used uh, by different uh, scientists that we can list out here. Different consistency models are listed as uh, sequential consistency model by Lampert, linearizability model by again Lampert, uh, PRAM model and linearizability slow memory weak consistency, release consistency, sequential consistency and so on causal consistency model. These models consistency models are important. Why? Because they give as an abstract to the programmer and programmer will use this model for. So let us go in more detail of these consistency models because they are the most important uh, features of the distributed shared memory. The first model is called strict consistency. It is also called a linearizability. It is also called as atomic consistency. So strict consistency model says that any read to a location is required to return the value written by the most recent write to that location as per the global time reference. So basically here there are two important thing is that whenever a read is issued, it has to be dependent on the most recent write. Second issue, we have to see that this particular dependency has to be linked in the global time scale or global time frame. So all the operations 
appear to be executed atomically and sequentially all the op processors see the same ordering of the events which is equivalent to a global time occurrence of non overlapping events so here in this strict consistency the the association of the read to the most recent write and also the global time reference is going to be very very important notions now conditions of linearizability more formally a sequence of invocation and response is linearizable if there is a permutation sequence of adjacent pairs of corresponding invocation and response events satisfying first condition for every variable v the projection of sequence prime on v denotes sequence prime v is such that every read returns the most recent write that immediately preceded it so this condition we have seen that the read has to be preceded with the most recent write on a global scale or in a global reference second part is says that if the response of operation 1 occurred before the invocation of operation 2 in the sequence then operation 1 occurs before operation 2 in the sequence prime that means in the global scale so if the operation 1 happened before operation 2 so in the global scale it should reflect this happened before relation and this is the condition number 2 and this has to be in the reference to the global time frame so condition 1 specifies that every processor sees a common order of sequence prime of events that and that or and that in this order the semantics is that read returns the most recent be completed write value condition 2 specifies that the common order must satisfy the global time order of events that is the order of non overlapping operations in the sequence must be preserved strict sequence strict consistency or linearizability example we can see over here is that in the in this particular figure the execution is not linearizable because because the read by p2 here gives the value 0 although the most recent write of x is 4 although it is taking that particular value not the most recent but the old value where x was 0 in that case so so p2 so here we can see that the p2 issues the write p2 begins after the write x4 so this particular read happens after the write and so basically this read is not associated with the most recent write hence this is not linearizable this example shows that it is not linearizable however it is sequentially consistent what is sequentially consistent we will explain in a minute in the next slide hence the permutation this permutation or the ordering that is in sequence prime satisfying condition 2 above on the global time order does not exist so out of two condition condition number 1 and 2 defined earlier the so it violates condition number 2 hence is not linearized is not linearizable so this particular example in figure 13.5 the execution is linearizable so obviously we can see over here that this particular read of x is drawn out of the most recent write so here the uh, value 4 is written and the read is also basically able to fetch the same value or that value is basically now available whatever recent write has done similarly for y so y the most recent y has written value 2 and that is available to the to the to the read which is following the write so the this particular both the read operations so hence it is linearizable and it is also sequentially consistent so here it is written that it is consistent with the real time occurrence and that is write y2 and write x4 read x4 and 
read y2 is basically the sequence and that is why it is linearizable and this sequence is following the global time frame or the real time occurrence. Hence this permutation sequence prime satisfies the condition 1 and condition 2 hence it is the strictly consistent and linearizable. The implementation of linearizability we can see here <coughs> requires two aspects to be taken into an account. Okay. The first aspect which we have seen is how to associate the read with the most recent write. The second one is how to evolve a global time reference. Although there is no global clock which and in the distributed system and also there is no common memory. So, in spite of these two absence, we have to provide the global time frame reference to all the events which is occurring. Linearizability is implementation is a challenge. So, let us see how the linearizability is implemented. So, as I mentioned simulating global time axis is expensive, assume full replication is available and a total order broadcast support is also available. Total order broadcast will be used here in implementation of linearizability. Now, here when the memory manager receives the read and write from the applications, it will issue a total order broadcast the read or write request to all the processes processors. So, it will await its own request that was broadcast perform the pending response as follows. When if the case is read then it will return the value from the local replica, if it is write then it will write to the local replica and return acknowledgement to the application. Now, when the memory manager receives the total order broadcast that is write x value from the network then it will write the value to the local replica x x. When the memory manager receives a total order broadcast from read x value from the network then it will not do any response. So, here you can see that either it is read or write in both the both the operations it will issue a total order broadcast. Why it is issuing total order broadcast is to evolve a global time reference implementation. So, for read operation whenever a memory manager system wide receive a total order broadcast they do not perform any action that we have seen in the algorithm then why is the broadcast necessary. The reason is this if the read operation do not participate in total order broadcast they do not get totally ordered with respect to the write operation as well as with respect to the other read operations. Hence the read is to be associated with the most recent write is realized because of this total order broadcast of read as well as write operations. The example we can see over here in this particular figure is that when a write issues a total order broadcast this message will reach p k uh, earlier than, than p j. So, if it reaches p k earlier and then a read is issued to read this variable x which is written by the most recent write. So, that value is available whatever is recently written value for x. However, for p j the read is happening before because the total order broadcast is receiving at a later point of time. Hence, it is going to read the old value although it is happening after this read even then it is able to only view the old values because new value is not available. Hence, it is a violation of linearizability. So, that is why the read operation have to basically participate in total order broadcast that I explained you. The next consistency model is called sequential consistency. Sequential consistency is specified as follows. The result of any execution is the same as if all operations of the processors were executed in some sequential order. The operations of each individual processor appear in this sequence in the local program order. 
so any interleaving of the operations from different processor is possible but all processor must see the same interleaving even if the two operations from different processors do not overlap in a global time scale they may appear in a reverse order in a common sequential order seen by all the processor so here one thing we have to understand that sequential consistency model is going to evolve a sequence or a some order sequence and that sequence should be visible to all the processes so that order uh, we are going to see how we are going to evolve in sequential consistency so here implementation of a sequential consistency model which is a weaker than the linearizable model or a strict consistency model it is weaker model so it only here you can see that only write participate in a total order broadcast and reads do not because all consecutive operations by the same processor are ordered in the same order the read operations by different processors are independent of each other and to be ordered only with respect to the write operations direct simplification of linearizability algorithm is we are going to show you so sequential consistency using local reads so here when a memory manager pi receives read or write from the application in sequential consistency model we see that what it will do it will form the two cases read and write if read then it will return the local replica and for the write operation if it want to write the val to the variable x then it will issue a total order broadcast to all the processor including itself when this memory manager at pi receives the total order broadcast from j from the network then it will write the value to the local replica and if it is the same process then it will send the acknowledgement to the application so here we see that only the write will issue the total order broadcast and read basically is not required why because it's a weaker model then a strict consistency model we have seen all linearizability model so this algorithm issues the locally issued writes get acknowledgement locally read are delayed until the locally preceding writes have been acknowledged all locally issued writes are pipeline so this is, is an improvement using local writes now the next consistency model for distributed shared memory is called causal consistency causal consistency is also a, a weaker model compared to the sequential consistency model in sequential consistency all write operation should be seen in a common order that we have seen that after issue the write then a total broadcast message is performed total order after the write operations so all the write operation should be seen in a common order in the sequential consistency now for causal consistency only causally related write should be seen in a common order so causal relation for a shared memory system at a processor local order of events is the causal order and write usually precedes read issued by another process if the read returns the value written by the write the transitive closure of the above two order is causal order total order broadcast for for the consistency sequential can also provide the causal order in the shared memory so here we can see that in this example the execution is sequentially consistent hence it is causally consistent why because causally consistency is a weaker than the sequential consistency here in this example you see both p3 and p4 see the operations at the p1 and p2 in a sequential order hence in in the causal order so that p3 and p4 the operations are basically the read operations of value x here by p3 
so x value is written 2 which is available over here similarly this x is writing 7 and this particular order is followed why because they are they are sequential order as well as causally related order similarly x4 and x7 so x4 here x4 it is there and x7 is there so they are causally related as well as uh, uh, and so it is sequential consistency as well as causal consistency model which is being taken in this example so this example shows that the execution is not sequentially consistent but causally consistent that means causally consistent is a weaker model this particular example will show uh, whereas the sequential consistency is not followed so here we can see that both p3 and p4 see the operations at p1 and p2 in a causal order because because the lack of causality relation between writes by p1 and p2 allows the values written by the two processor to be seen in different order of the system the execution is not sequentially consistent because there is no globally satisfying contradiction contradictory ordering requirement by reads and writes. So here you can see that uh, that the causal ordering is achieved in the sense that if we see the read operations of P3 and read operations of P4, so here the first read is able to read 7 and the second read is able to read the value 2. So they are different processors as you see. So as far as causal dependency is concerned, they are satisfying. As far as x4, x is concerned, it is getting 4 and then 7. So causal consistency is allowed, but sequential consistency is not there. Why? Because here you can see that uh, first 7 is read and then 2 is read and here 4 is basically read and then 7 is read. So the ordering of ordering is cannot be organized as per the sequential consistency. Hence, it is a causal consistency but not a sequential consistency. So this example shows that it is not even a causal consistency. So we will see a weaker model than causal consistency which is called a PRAM model where that PRAM consistency will be there but not causally consistent. So causally consistent, why it is not there? So you can see that uh, uh, x is basically 2 and then, then here x is basically read as 7. Now here x is read at 7 and x is then read at, at 7 so this causal relation is violated here in this particular order so 4 is preceding 7 because it is happening with this particular relation is violated here hence this is not causally consistent but we will see another weaker model where it is pram consistent so pram full form is called pipeline ram model or a processor consistency model it is also called as a pc that is a processor consistency that is the consistency at local level so only the write operation issued by the same processor are seen by the others in the order they were issued but writes from different processors may be seen by the other processors in different order so here the ordering by ordering of writes by the same processor is there unlike in causal ordering where the ordering of writes between different processors are also if they are causally related they are, that also basically is enforced. So here processor consistency or a pipeline RAM or a PRAM consistency model is a weaker form of a causal consistency model. Now this PRAM can be implemented using a FIFO broadcast. Another Consistency model is slow memory, so only write operation issued by the same processor and to the same memory location must be seen by the others in that order. Slow memory, but not the PRAM. So obviously we see that there is another weaker model that is called a slow memory model. Now 
after seeing so many number of consistency models starting from very strict consistency model that is called the linearizability model or strict consistency model then we we have seen that a weakening of this model we realized uh, another sequential consistency model and further weakening it we have obtained a causal consistency model weakening further causal consistency we have obtained pram model pipeline ram model weakening this pram model also we have received a slow memory model and beyond slow memory there is no consistency model is also there that means consistency model is not assumed so this particular weakening will enforce a strict hierarchy of the memory consistency models which is shown here in this picture synchronization based consistency model so here we are now going to see the synchronization based consistency model the first one is called weak consistency so consistency condition apply only to the special synchronization instructions and for example a barrier synchronization non sync statement may be executed in any order by various processors example weak consistency release consistency entry consistency so weak consistency all the writes are propagated to the other processes and all writes done elsewhere are brought locally at the sync instruction access to the sync variables are sequentially consistent access to the sync variables is not permitted until all writes elsewhere have completed no data access is allowed until all previous synchronization variable accesses have been performed drawback cannot tell whether the beginning access to the shared variable enter critical section or finished access to the shared variable that is exit critical section two types of synchronization variables acquire and release release consistency acquire indicates cs is to be entered hence all writes from the other processor should be locally reflected at this instruction release indicates access to the critical section is being completed acquire and release can be defined on a subset of the variables lazy release consistency propagate the updates on demand and not in pram way so entry consistency each ordinary shared variable is associated with the synchronization variable lock or barrier now we are going to see a shared memory mutual exclusion algorithm which is given by the leslie lampard and it is also called the bakery algorithm so lampard proposed a classical bakery algorithm for n process mutual exclusion in the shared memory system the algorithm is so called because it mimics the action that the customers follow in a bakery store a process wanting to enter a critical section picks a token number that is one greater than the elements in the array choosing from 1 to n so processors processes enters the critical section in the increasing order of the token numbers in case of concurrent accesses to choosing by multiple processes the processes may have the same token number obtained in this case a unique lexicographic order is defined on a tuple token and pid and this will uh, give a total order and this dictates the order in which the processes are entering the critical section the algorithm for process i is given in the next slide the algorithm can be shown to satisfy three requirements of the critical section problem the first is mutual exclusion bounded weighting and progress this is the bakery algorithm lampard's n process bakery algorithm for shared memory mutual exclusion so here we can see that this introduces the time stamp or this ordering so mutual exclusion the role of line 1e wait for others time stamp choice to stabilize and the use of time stamp is to order them according to the priority so highest priority will be allowed to go into a critical section and this will ensure the mutual exclusion bounded weighting means pi can be overtaken by the other process at most once and the progress means lexicographic order is the total order process with the lowest time stamps will enter the critical section that becomes the high priority 
So space complexity here, the lower bound of n registers, time complexity is of the order n, time of bakery algorithm, Lampert's fast mutex algorithm takes of the order 1 in the absence of the contention, however it compromises on bounded weighting, it uses write, read, write, write, uh, write and read. So write of x followed by read of y, then write of y followed by read of x. This sequence necessary and sufficient condition to check for the contention and safe, safely enter the critical section. There are few other algorithms in this particular problem. The another algorithm as I, as I mentioned that is called fast mutual exclusion algorithm. The two process mutual exclusion modified mutual exclusion algorithm for two process concept for weight freedom. Conclusion. Distributed shared memory is an abstraction whereby distributed programs can communicate with the memory operations that is through read and write as opposed to using message passing in three cases. So in this lecture we have discussed the concept of distributed shared memory and we have also seen several consistency model like linearizability, sequential consistency, causal consistency, pipeline RAM and slow memory. We have also discussed the fundamental problem of shared memory mutual exclusion with the help of the Lampert bakery algorithm. In the upcoming lecture, we will discuss about distributed minimum spanning tree. Thank you.